summer 2030. In the heart of the Alps, at a stone's throw from the Brenner Pass, the river Izarco runs through its lovely valley, a precious ally for those who live here, a source of renewable energy and a tireless sculptor of impressive landscapes. Perfectly on time, and only 25 minutes after leaving Innsbruck. Yes, boys, isn't that something? Ten years ago, nobody would have thought that was possible. You worked on this project, didn't you, Grandad? I did, I did. You know, right now, we're actually traveling under the river Izarco. Really, Grandad? Yes, really. Let me tell you how it all began. For several years, I worked for BBTSC, the company that was set up to plan and build this tunnel. Thanks to this incredible project, today, traveling from Innsbruck to Fortezza is really quick. So boys, are you ready? Yeah. Then let's go on a trip back through time to see how it all started. Here we are in 2014 and the works have just begun. So we're gonna need to get our gear on, all right? Watch me. <gasps> okay, so get your gear on then. Okay, so you're ready. Let's go on down and see the construction site. This is just the first phase of construction. But everything is already moving with speed and precision. There will be a lot of progress in a very short time. Let's go! But I have more secrets for you boys. So why don't we go and take a look? Digging a railway tunnel under a river is not easy. Most of all, you need the right people, and you can see them right here. Expert geologists, engineers for prospection and planning, surveyors, technicians, specialized workers, and miners for excavation and construction. And you also need the right machinery, like cranes, drills, Behind you, James. jumbos, Look, Ross. lorries, diggers, Over there. and concrete mixers. So, let's get back to the train now. Now you've seen how much preparatory work is needed. Before moving on, you need to know exactly what the mountain is like inside. There are two essential variables, the type of rock and the excavation depth. You have to use different strategies for different conditions. Let's take a look first of all at tunnels that are excavated underground. If the rock is hard and compact, Explosives are used. Machines drill holes in the rock face. Charges are set. 
and the blast goes off. After this, the so-called spoil removal takes place, followed by trimming, making sure the edges of the blast hole are smoothed over. If you're excavating through loose material, stones and earth, the ground must be consolidated along the edge of where the tunnel will be. Jet grouting is used to make the ground more solid. Once this is done, a digger with an enormous jackhammer is used. If necessary, metal ribs can be used to further consolidate the upper part of the tunnel. If the excavation is near the surface, a so-called cut-and-cover tunnel is dug. Excavation here starts from the surface. The two side walls are built first, then the base, and then the cover. And how do you cross a river? This was the biggest challenge. The ground under a river is unstable because of the water, so special techniques are needed. First of all, enormous shafts are dug downwards. Once under the riverbed, a mixture of liquid nitrogen is injected through special piping. This lowers the temperature by a significant amount, and the water in the ground freezes and makes it as hard as rock. At this point, we can use the techniques I mentioned before. Once dug, tunnels are waterproofed and lined with concrete. Then the tracks and all the systems that are necessary to make trains run are installed. Granddad, is the construction site always open? Yeah, work goes on at the construction site 24 hours a day and at more than one rock face. In every area, the work proceeds step by step, and once the proper excavation method is selected, this is repeated in small sections, a few meters at a time. But, Granddad, there's no trace of all this work now. How is it possible? You're right. You'd think a construction site that size would leave dreadful marks on the landscape. But this didn't happen. Everything was planned to remove any trace of the works and make the valley look just as it did before. The Brenner Base Tunnel, thanks to these works, not only passes under the Izaka River, but the existing railway line, the Brenner Highway and the State Road as well. At 64 kilometers from Fortezza to Tulfes, the Brenner Base Tunnel is the longest underground railway link in the world. We can be truly proud of this project, a uniquely European record ensuring modern transportation options thanks to new, fast and sustainable connections.